When you start with something wild, it's hard to evolve it to become more so. Bugatti has been working with its tried and true quad turbocharged W16 engine for decades now. What started off with the Veyron and its nearly 900 horsepower engine eventually evolved into the Chiron. That mighty machine delivered almost 1600 horsepower. But the Chiron is now done with, so Bugatti needs something even more mad. Meet the 1800 horsepower Tourbillon. If you're going to name a car after the part of a higher-end watch that's supposed to make it both more accurate and more complicated, you better back that name up. This being Bugatti means, of course they do. The heart of it all lies with the powertrain. Turbocharging is out. The W layout is also gone. Now we have a naturally aspirated V16. It produces right around 1,000 horsepower and 664 pound-feet of torque. That's not the only bit of thrust production on board though, because the Tourbillon also features three electric motors, two at the front and one out back. In total, we're working with 1,800 horsepower. The three electric motors deliver 800 horsepower on their own. They pull juice from a 24.8 kilowatt hour battery pack. The gearbox is an eight speed dual clutch, and of course this one is all wheel drive. Cosworth helped design the engine, which revs all the way up to 9,000 RPM and sounds as amazing as that last sentence would have you believe. What about the actual performance? The numbers are expectedly astounding. Bugatti says the Tourbillon will go from zero to 62 miles per hour in just two seconds flat and to 125 miles per hour from a standstill in under five seconds. And if you're using the speed key, you get to unlock a top speed of 276 miles per hour. But if you want to cruise around silently and let the V16 take a nap, the Tourbillon also has 37 miles of usable EV only range. Design wise, it's immediately recognizable as a Bugatti product. Sure, it looks a bit similar to the Chiron, but the two don't share a single part. Even better, the carbon fiber body Tourbillon sits lower and wider compared to the prior model. Yet that horseshoe grille up front is a link across Bugatti models, while the rear lighting element brings the brand forward into the future, which I assume is possible as this car is also likely capable of time travel. I haven't confirmed that yet though. My current credit card status doesn't permit me the ability to call Bugatti's people. On the inside, the Tourbillon name starts to make even more sense. The gauge cluster is a wild technical achievement all on its own. This design points to something that could become special going forward. The lack of real estate dedicated to screens. The head of the driver is one of the most beautiful clusters ever devised. It's basically built similar to how a high-end watch is constructed. There's titanium playing nice with sapphire and rubies. And that gauge cluster, though it sits seemingly atop the steering column, stays put when the wheel is turned left and right. It's a wonderfully designed analog element in a car packing the latest in multi-type powertrain tech. If you do desire some screen time, however, there is a small digital display that hides atop the center stack. It's for vehicle data and to connect your phone to the car. Also, it deploys when you put the car in reverse for the backup camera. The Tourbillon marks the second model to arrive from the melding of minds between Bugatti and Ramatz. And it's clearly a hell of a thing. One of those, if you have to ask how much, your bank account is probably too light to handle the load. Word is that these start north of four and a half million, and that's before you start adding in any option you can think of. Plus, the only way you can get one of the 250 set to be built is if you've previously purchased a Bugatti or Ramatz vehicle. But if you have the dough and are qualified but miss out on this first run, I'm sure Bugatti will crank out 50 different, even more limited run models over the course of the next few years.